talking about the process of applying within the UK for the physician associate studies I have got my notes written on my iPad so hopefully uh, I get as much information out and um, yeah you guys find this video helpful so first of all so applying to uh, the UK physician associate study program uh, most university deliver the course as a master's however there is um, a university which is called Euclid University uh, that you can do the course as a non-undergraduate program so uh, the first thing I'll suggest you to do is go on to the FPCRC uh, P website and this is basically the Faculty of Physician Associate website and they do have um, the um, names of the, all the different universities that are credited and provide the Physician Associate Study course. At the moment in the UK there are 37 or 34, 37 universities that provide the course of which one of them offer as an undergraduate course as well. Um, some university offer the course at different, I would say, accreditation. So some university offers, offers the course as a Master's of Science, some others offer the course as a PGD, and some others offer the course as a Master's of Physician Associate Studies, so MPSA. Uh, what's the difference? So the massive difference between these three, I would say, categories are that the Masters of Science means that when you finish, or actually while you're doing the course, you are to write a dissertation. Mostly this will be on the second year of the course. You are to write a, submit a final piece of work that is usually a dissertation. A PGD, however, does not include having a dissertation. Perhaps you may have to do like a clinical presentation or things like that, it, it all differs from the university that you attend. And a master's physician associate studies, uh, same, you don't write a dissertation, but um, they build in modules within the course that kind of covers the must, um, covers the master's, I would say, accreditation. So it's a bit more technical, but I don't know how to explain it. However, for the master's of science, you do have to write a dissertation. The length of the course, as I said, is usually two years. So you have year one and year two of master studies. And at the moment, uh, there is only one university that offer the course as a four years program, and that it's an undergraduate of physician associate studies. Um, for the most part, the uh, funding for the course is self-funded. However, there are some university that do offer part-time uh, funding or slash uh, sponsorship or full-time uh, sponsorship. Uh, in the year I applied, I remember Swansea had full-time, uh, Swansea University had full-time funding, uh, sponsorship, and Playmont University had a part-time sort of uh, sponsorship. So in your second year, you will get sponsored by a trust that will be training you. Um, yeah, so in previous years, the um, Health of Education England has kind of supported uh, university in offering a grant to the student that did the Physician Associate course, and this involved a £5,000 bursary. However, I have heard so far that they may remove the bursary for coming years as from 2020. So I would suggest you searching up for each university and see or phone them up to see whether they do offer um, some sort of uh, sponsorship or some sort of funding to support yourself. And usually the £5,000 sponsorship, uh, bursary, sorry, you could either use it uh, towards your travel cost to placement or like in my university, the bursary is mostly for 
gets deducted from your tuition fees so also that's another thing uh, um, another thing I would suggest you do is also finding out whether your university offers the course as a master degree because um, there is this thing whereby you get 20% off if you've previously studied at, at that university. So your masters, you get 20% off. So that is something really good to consider. Unfortunately, my university didn't offer the course, so I couldn't obviously apply to my university. I had to apply to other universities, so I didn't get that 20% discount. However, it can be very handy. So I would suggest you look into that. Also, an important thing to do when researching to what university you want to apply is looking out at the structure of the course. I can't even emphasize this a lot, but different universities will offer the course in different ways. Obviously, the aim is to provide physician associates to the uh, workforce, but universities are entitled to offer the course in ways that they deem right or possible or you know so some university like my one emphasize in case-based learning meaning that uh, most um, topics that we get taught of or most condition that we are to know as physician associates we get taught them by having case studies so this is something i was really looking for when i was applying to a uh, university because i feel that that type of approach enables me to number one engage number two always have a reflective mind on oh what could happen if this 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 occurred and then another thing it just gives you that group activity learning that i really like because as a pa you will be working with multidisciplinary team and you want to be able to know how to express yourself in front of other people that you may not know or you know or there are different healthcare pro uh, providers so that's one thing i really liked or uh, i tried to look for when i was researching on how they delivered the course I look at the module that they provide so usually the module are quite similar between different universities but the way they teach the module may differ so the teaching uh, aspect of it was what I was actually most more uh, more interested on uh, another thing to look at for when you're look, researching university is maybe how they provide placement or what placement uh, they provide some universities are quite good in breaking down um, when you're gonna have your placement and maybe what hospital they work at we or if they don't provide that they will provide what specialties you will be doing your placement on so that's another thing i found quite interesting because obviously some university may offer x amount of time in a e some university may offer x amount of time in that particular specialty so for me that was also an interesting point to obviously look at again I would say look at your budget and look at where you want to go to because some universities like in my case i lived in london and i could literally count how many universities were kind of reachable to me but most universities are up displaced up north and um a bit down south of england so you know it was a kind of a hard one for me because in any case i kind of knew that i may have to move so because i really wanted to do the course so in my head i knew that when i was applying moving was part of you know the things i had to consider because in case i didn't get into university they were kind of accessible and reachable to me in london so that's debate in mind another thing with moving obviously comes budget the course as i said is sort of self-funding and the cost uh, the cost of the course is about nine thousand pounds to ten thousand five hundred pounds so each university have their own tuition fee and now however the tuition fee do change every year so please 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 make sure that when you are looking at the website you're looking at the right year and also confirm with the academic people or tutors and ask them code phone them up and just ask them at this the tuition fee just so that you have a budget and you know because is um, you can get funding from student finance however the funding is only ten thousand pounds six hundred and fifty it may go up next year but yet it won't cover the full cost of the course so eventually you would have to provide the remaining amount of the funding so you want to make sure that even if you decide to move you're able to meet um, and meet up with the expenses if that makes sense 
Um, some university, as I said, when looking at placement, some university may offer primary care placement in first year and then secondary care placement in second year. So secondary care placement is basically hospital placements and then primary care placement is basically GP. However, I have had stories of people that went into hospital placement in first year and had their GP rotation in second year. Does it really matter? Not really. However, uh, the way it works in my university, we do go on placement one day a week, uh, starting from the ending of the month of October, and that will be in GP. And then in February, we will be going two days a week for two months, and then we go back to one day a week until June. And after June, we have our first acute medicine placement, which will be nine weeks, um, nine weeks long. So that will be kind of very, very long from June to August. And basically that will be a whole placement and then when we come back again in September for my second year I will then start my hospital rotation placements um, within the different specialties so obs and gynae, uh, pediatrics, a &E, uh, surgery and mental health so yeah those are the main uh, ones that uh, physician associate studies students are meant to be doing um, question I did ask myself when I was applying for university where am I willing to commute or move out of area so obviously in my case I had like because I really wanted to do the course as soon as possible I really my question my answer to this question was basically yes and then can i afford the bills because obviously i had to research on how much like a room would cost how much traveling fuel and things like that you know and then can i work while studying that's a very big big question the course is very intense and working can be somehow tricky it's doable if you want to again but a lot of people decide not to work because the course it is intense so that's something you have to bear in mind when considering doing the course is that there's a possibility you may not be able to work so that's very important to know and also do i do i like the environment there is nothing worse than being in an environment you don't like you if you apply i feel like if you're applying to a university you sort of have to have an idea of what the environment looks like and if you also like the place obviously if you want to apply you're more than welcome to apply but you know you just want to make sure that you you are in a cozy place that you know that you can you know do well that makes sense okay and then also another question was do i have the entry requirement that is key point when applying for the course so i'm just gonna talk for the masters in general so for the uh, postgraduate uh, diploma and the mpsa so i know that many many universities have their different entry requirements mm -hmm. <laughs> however generally uh, the course or the entry requirements are a, you should have a 2-1 or 2 actually a 2-2 two -two or 2-1 or above um, in a biomedical science degree or it could be a healthcare related science degree. Some including nursing, midwifery, um, paramedics, uh, you could also have uh, mental health, uh, public health, physiology, basically all these healthcare related uh, degrees. Also, you should have maths and English standard grade C or above, and mostly that what the university would require. However, I have seen universities when I was looking for, which obviously narrowed down the places I could apply to, was that some university requirements included having an A level uh, in chemistry or biology or some sort of science A level, which could be tricky because not everyone does A level. Like in my case, I did a BTEC, so I had no A level. So, saying universities such as I think Brighton University or Hoyok York University, I could not apply to because I did not meet the entry criteria. However, if you want to try, you could apply, I don't know, but I would say always make sure that you meet the entry criteria, entry requirements. And to be fair, there are quite a few universities. So I don't think 
you know, missing out on two universities is a big deal. Like there are quite a few universities that may not require those requirements. So just keep your, I would say keep your option quite open. And also another thing is some university uh, may require you to have previous healthcare experience and some university may also uh, may not require you to have a bachelor's of science degree but you may have a bachelor's of art degree so a ba degree and it also it, sometimes it also comes with personal circumstances so some university may consider your application due to maybe extensive healthcare experience or maybe you just decided to change i don't know your career and you show on your personal statement that okay this is why i want to do this and if your personal statement is good and strong and you know they will, more, they will be more than happy to offer you an interview, I, I, I believe. So, yes, yeah, so I would say um, these are most, in general terms, this is what they require. But, however, they do consider people's personal circumstances. So, you know, you, you, you have kind of a leeway over there. And then another thing that I would say you should, uh, I would say you should uh, look at when applying for uh, the courses for, uh, for PA school is finding out the cohort size because the cohort size will have an impact on the amount of people they will call for interview. So I know universities that had like, that take, took up like 60 students, uh, like St. George's or some university, universities differ. So it all depends on, um, it all depends on the university. So sometimes don't be alarmed if you don't get offered an interview. It could be that a lot of people applied. So obviously they have to narrow it down so much that although you may think that your personal statement is strong and maybe it is actually strong, you may not be offered an interview. So I would really like recommend that you, I really recommend that you, um, just look at how many students and also there's social media you can always uh, there's the peer community in on Instagram is amazing and everyone is willing to give you advice help you out so I'd say I would say go on to Instagram and ask the different PAs what you need to go to how they're finding it and also how many students are there because it does change every year and I feel like as the course is getting more and more popular they will basically increase the spaces sometimes it's not possible due to the uh, finding obviously placement but i feel like the course is getting popular so eventually universities are gonna have to increase the amount of people they take on to the course the thing uh, i found that was in in order to apply i had to narrow down to um deciding whether i wanted to do a master's or a pgd personally i knew i couldn't afford the pgd basically if I had to do the PG deep, I would have to basically fund it myself. And I, I don't have 20K chilling at my house. You know, like that would have been such a disaster. So I knew that I had to do masters because I would be able to get the student finance loan. So uh, at the moment, the student finance loan is only available with for sorry, EU student and um, UK students. Obviously, with Brexit, I don't know where they're going to take this, so please don't quote me about it. Things might change. Uh, however, at the moment, UK and EU students are entitled to funding, and some university may offer scholarships. As I said, not all of them. But yeah, so if I am looking at the um, funding that I'll receive from postgraduate from uh, from student finance, I know that I can be able to manage the, all the rest of the payment through family support, through me working. So what I did during my undergraduate was that I was working a lot, trying to save as much money, so that I know that when I'm in my course, I don't have to uh, stress too much. In that sense, so that's something I would say you should uh, look at as well. Okay. In terms of um, experience, again, some university may want you to have a patient care experience. Some university may not want you to have a patient care experience. However, I feel like the way the course is going, more and more university would appreciate if you did have some patient care experience. And the patient care experience does not necessarily mean that you have to be working in health. Like you could literally go shadow a doctor, um, a nurse. It's just for them to have an idea 
that you, okay you really want to be within patient and however you can always you know write a personal statement that although you haven't had patient care experience you can the skills that you've had maybe from your i don't know admin work um um uh, sales assistant they're all transferable skills like communication you know transferable skills that you will need when working within healthcare so it's not a deal breaker i know people that did not have a care experience and were successful into entering um pa school so honestly you don't really need to but if you do that i think that is a point or that's a bonus because at the end of the day that's what you really are going to do when you qualify as a physician associate um another thing in terms of the application process i feel like you need to get your things organized i was going to be a bit ghetto but i'm just going to say you need to get your things organized in terms of um applying most university have an online portal so you go onto like the physician associate studies um um degree or whatever did i say degree so you go onto the physician associate page and then when you go onto the page within the university it will say apply now and then normally it will refer you to another portal where you would have to sign up and then that will be where they will have co uh, correspondence they will have correspondence with you and most times the application is online and it may require you to upload mostly your passport or some sort of id it may require you required to you to upload some references so they may want an academic reference and a workplace reference or may just want an academic reference and also another thing they may ask you to upload are your certificates with your grades and uh, some other universities however may um may put you through a portal but then ask you to download their form and their form may then um so when you download the form you will then have to fill it out and after you fill it out you'd have to re-upload it back to them or post it or some do something basically um in terms of personal statement yes every university will want a personal statement so there's no escape you have to write one however i literally the personal statement i'll make a whole video about that because it's i think that is another long talk so yeah i'll make another video so check out um, look up for that uh, and in terms of um secondary personal statement i know some university did ask questions on um how do you think the role of the pa fits within the nhs workforce so a question like that it's like basically another mini statement where you're explaining how you think the pa role fits in the nhs so some universities would basically want two statements some university may want one some universities will have a word count some universities will not have a word count so it all depends but most university i think wanted a five to seven hundred word count personal statement so it's not really that long in terms of uh how easy it is to apply i found out that during my when i was applying it was quite easy because i took my time to research the universities i wanted to go and as i was going along i was making my application and because i had all my uh, i basically scanned all my documents my certificates onto my app um my macbook it was really easy for me to literally log into a university that wanted to apply go onto the portal and basically send off my personal statement and everything on um so the application process i think is really smooth however sometimes you will need to chase up the university to ask them when they're going to be you know asking uh, inviting people for interviews some universities i'm not gonna lie were really slow in replying however you need to recognize that the pressure is high people there's so many emails coming through and you're not the only one so that's important for you to know but be patient when you call them just explain to them that you've waited x amount of time you haven't had any correspondence you would like to know how far has your application gone and just be really polite and gentle and to be fair the most times that i called different universities they were really happy and explained to me what was going on what was not going on and th what they needed more so sometimes they may have sent you an email and you may go to the, your junk mail so just bear that in mind as well so make sure you check your junk mail as well because sometimes you may not receive the email and they may have sent you some correspondence um in terms of uh, is there like a best university i don't think there is uh i feel like 
uh, the place where God wants you to go, that's where you will end up going, and that is the truth. Uh, but if you don't believe in faith, I just think that give it your best, give it your shot. Literally, I have people in my course that only applied to this university and got offers, but I was so insecure and I thought I was never going to get a place, and I applied to quite a few universities so and was funny when i started receiving the offers so if you want to know a story about my application and what university i applied to thumbs up this video and comment down below if not yeah let's we'll leave it at that so yeah in my in my case yes i applied to different universities and um yeah and then when i started receiving offers and then was making my decision whether i wanted to go there if i didn't want to go there but yeah that's another story for another day so yeah i hope um this video was informative i hope this video was good and i hope you've learned uh or i hope you've got an idea on how the application process works within the uk and I hope you get successful at interview. I will be doing videos on interview tips for the physician associate course. So yeah, uh, just wait for that. It should be up in coming days. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please share, like, and subscribe.